Hick on 45 here. <laughs> what now? <laughs> it was just funny the way, because you're just like, <laughs> well, I'm trying to have to start. We don't do a lot of these. Yeah. Okay. It's fine. We're sorry. It's We're ready. Good. We're good. <laughs> just keep going. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> yeah. It's fine. <laughs> hey, hi, everybody. We thought we'd chat with you a little bit. We have a special guest here today. As you probably already know, or you might not. Yeah, it's uh, Hickok 45 son. He right. Yeah. Special guest. <laughs> yeah, he lost all of his hair. And he yeah. Came over here. We're going to talk yeah, I to played, him. I played the Ryman last night. You guys may not know. <laughs> yeah. well, I played the Ryman. I walked the steps and yeah, yeah. got lost. <laughs> now you know who this guy is. Uh, Oliver Anthony, whose real name is? Chris. You don't keep Chris that Lunsford. secret, do you? Yeah. No, I don't. So, uh, yeah, Chris, we're happy to have Chris today. We've been doing some shooting. Yeah. Chris likes guns, so uh, he can't be all bad. <laughs> yeah. Where'd you yeah. Where did you decide or, or develop your enjoyment of shooting, Chris? Yeah, well, so years ago, there was this guy on YouTube. I can't remember what his name went by, <laughs> but there's this guy about 10 years ago I started watching on YouTube and uh, a couple other people too, but... Yeah, I've watched, just watched a lot of videos out on the range. And um, so I, my first gun I ever got was a 357 Taurus revolver uh, that I inherited from my uncle when he passed away. And I, I had that, I think I was 18. And then in my early 20s, the whole uh, assault weapons ban thing got proposed and I'd always wanted some kind of rifle just to have. Yeah. And so that impulse, I did an impulse buy and I went out and got a Wasser 10 AK for like $400. And, oh, man. So that's been my baby for a long time. And um, yeah, I was yeah. glad to learn you like the 762 by 39. It's, it's so much fun. It's a fun yeah. caliber. You know, yeah. it, same reason it was popular in the military. It's just intermediate, a little bit of power, but it's, yeah. it's not too hard kicking. Yeah. yeah, it's just something fun. And so I, I got into shooting at different ranges and finding other people that shot. And it just kind of was like, yeah. it's a, such a such a good community of people, just even on the not, not to mention that it's good to have for self-defense and all, but just it's a the gun community is just it's like one big family, you know. Yeah. So uh, it really is just like any family. You got a weirdo here and there, but, you know, <laughs> a troll here and there. Well, yeah. it's like what they say: if yeah, if you don't have a weirdo in the family, then you're you're <laughs> go, probably the weirdo. Go either. look in the mirror. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Exactly. But yeah, so that was my that was my first gun, and then I ended up getting a concealed carry permit, and um, my first actual pistol I bought was that that uh, American, I bought an American Tactical and then a Rock Island Armory 1911. And so carried a 1911 for a long time. I know you're not a big fan of 45 caliber or anything, but. Uh, <laughs> yeah, really? Yeah, but so yeah, that's kind of how I got into it. You obviously can shoot, uh, you know, the rifle, the handguns, and even the, the firearms we brought out that that you had never fired before. It's, it's obvious, you can tell. When somebody can shoot, they can shoot, you know, kind of, generally speaking, you might yeah. have trouble with something, but you know, you're used to operating a trigger and adjusting and uh, coordinating that with your sight alignment. It's, it's pretty obvious you've had experience with that. And shooting a full auto AK is not the easiest thing in the world. You <laughs> no, not at all. Like a man, you know? Yeah. You took it like a man. Yeah, it's nothing like that little automatic Uzi. That thing's, uh, I said that was the most harmless, pleasant little thing to shoot. <laughs> like, yeah, it's harmless, so yeah. yeah. Yeah, like it just, it's just like, you don't, it doesn't hurt your hand or anything, no recoil, so. Yeah, and then especially with a suppressor on it, with it uh, being yeah. a little bit quieter adds to right. that, doesn't it? Yeah. You yeah. feel like you're shooting a 22. It's sort of like uh, those high rate of fire sub guns are kind of like a shotgun in a way. Because if you did like a burst, it's the same effect, right? Yeah. You're sending out like five yeah. pellets, five chunks of lead at a time, yeah. you know? Yeah. It's, uh, yeah, it's an honor to come here and get to shoot. Like I said, I've watched you for so many years and um, just your marksmanship's always been so crazy just watching you pick all kind of crazy stuff up and you know and that, and to see you guys actually do it because you know you wonder if maybe it's just a lot of editing. it's fake if it's you just a lot, of, a lot of sound effects added in but to come here and, and see it firsthand you know no gimmick so well we you know it, yeah well decent day john and i can hit just like you do hit pretty much what you're aiming at but you know you miss and some days you're not as, as on as others maybe but you know yeah. and I don't as we were just talking about I don't like little bitty targets and uh, some people do I'm not uh, bashing them for that people who do precision shooting they like to get down on a bench and shoot at something 800 yards away yeah. I, I like moderate size targets that you, you know if your sights are on you, you know you can hit and it's fun to hear it ring and that kind of thing and uh, but but yeah I appreciate you watching all this time of course that's how we connected uh, 
you know, yeah. we, we, you know, exchanged comments or messages on Facebook and was glad to find out. Yeah, well, now, I think it was right after I had, uh, you know, seen your music and, and knew about you like everybody else and thought, oh, this is cool, great song and, you know, that kind of thing. And then when you wrote me, I was okay. And yeah, it was, out. it was a, yeah, I really appreciated the comment you left. I but, can't remember what video it was on. I don't on, remember but, what I left, but I, I, you know, enjoyed your music and, and yeah. your writing, you know. You yeah. got a pretty good voice. You might make it. You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, we li we lip sync everything on stage. Yeah. Yeah. just like we do with the shooting. We yeah, it's rings. all added in. Yeah, we're just singing off of a off of a tape. Yeah, when we're up on stage. It, but it really is the. Uh, it's an incredible song. Obviously, it's an incredible song. The Richmond song. You even have a ton of incredible songs. But you know, the way that that video went viral is fascinating to me because it was viral in a different way. It wasn't like, oh, look at this cool, interesting thing. It was just like. I mean, really resonate is the best term to yeah. use for that. It, it yeah. resonated with so many people. For example, when I first saw it, I, it was already big before I saw it. And people had been telling me about it, right? So there's that thing of like, all right, well, let's see this thing that everyone's talking yeah. about, right? Yeah. And then as soon as I watched it, I was like, whoa. You know what I mean? It just it was just one of those things. It was like, oh, this is why everyone's talking about it. Yeah, I think I've seen it to you. You probably yeah. did. Yeah. yeah. You know, it's funny, yeah, because I'm the kind of guy when something goes viral and everybody's talking about it, I almost don't even want to watch yeah. it. Yeah, that's uh, just I like all right. stupid. Yeah, yeah. Right. usually. Right. Yeah. Someone but, killed an elephant in their front yard. Right. What yeah. was the biggest shock for me was like it was just the sense of unity among a lot of different communities of people who would normally not have anything in common, you know, in today's time. Like, if you mm -hmm. watch a lot of the reaction videos and read the comments and stuff, it's just like... Yeah. Oh, I looked at I looked at a lot of that for some reason. I, one of them popped up. Yeah. And you're right. There were so yeah. many people, so many different ethnic backgrounds, you know, react doing... I didn't want even to wear the react videos. That's a thing. And <laughs> yeah. there's a yeah. lot of those out there. And there was just all sorts of people, you know, playing your, your, your song and talking about it. It was cool. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and it's been it's been nice. It was it's a blessing too that I had already written some other stuff before Richmond came out cuz mm -hmm. you know, it's like how do you how do you take that lightning in the bottle and run with it? And so it's like Right. Now we've got the we got an album out with, you know, 10 songs on it that aren't Richmond and like we go to the shows and like a lot of people are resonating with all the other music too and it's just been yeah. It's been a cool experience and so like I was so stressed out in the beginning because I had all these different things happening and you know like you got to hire like I got to be like a boss now and hire people and yeah. like yeah. I, that's not my personality type at all and so uh, but you know it, it's all worth it when you get to come do fun stuff like this yeah. <laughs> like like I, I got to pinch myself and I'm sitting here you know shooting at Hickok 45's range or whatever like stuff like this is just um, I don't know it's just it's things you won't ever forget, you know. Well, we appreciate it, and glad you you could come by. We had, we really thoroughly enjoyed the uh, uh, performance at the Ryman last Incredible. night. Uh, that that's such a special place, and uh, yeah, what do they call it? I couldn't think of this. The they call it the church, mother the mother, mother church, church is what of, they call uh, it. country music. That's it. Yeah. The mother church of country music. I was yeah. Some kind of church I couldn't remember because it was a church, but yeah, I mean it was just phenomenal. We've heard your songs. I've yeah. listened to most. Probably all of them on on YouTube or where somewhere. And but last night was uh, it was it was way better than I expected. Yeah, you know? and I expected it to be good. So and I'm not just saying that. John, that was, <laughs> that was our first reaction. No, when we came I, out that was like this is going to be terrible. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, well, I told John before going in. I said, now I know country music's not your big thing, or bluegrass, and of course you know there's a variety of music you do, but. So I was trying to prepare him a little bit. Well, I mean, I like. But you already knew the music. music. Yeah, 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 of yeah. course. Yeah. But we both came out. Yeah. Wow. The, and the thing that I noticed, you know, sitting there and again to to watch you perform, was the, the things that make the Richmond song so great and so captivating are to me present in different uh, ways in all of your music. Yeah. Yeah. Well, what I will say is like, at least, and I hope that I'll be able to continue to do this in the future because that's my biggest fear is can I keep doing it, but. All the songs that, like we sing on stage, were all written, like in a period in my life when I wasn't a full, when I wasn't a singer at all. I wasn't doing gigs or anything. I was just going and doing open mics, and you know, I was in a bad place in my life, and I was getting drunk and high all the time, and like I just felt, you know, I was just in a rut, man. And so, like a lot of those songs that are singing about that, like that was me, sort of. That was me just trying to express the way I felt about things to myself, you know, and. So there's a lot of emotion in those songs. Like some of the ones we sang, it was cool that y'all were there last night because we did three songs on stage we, that I've never performed live. They were great. Yeah, ever. they were. Yeah, yeah. The, the, the first song, yeah. I was like, okay, yeah, this is ballsy to play 
you know, the yeah. new song to open with it, and then it was, I was like, oh, this is incredible, I love it. Yeah, so it's, it's, it's funny, because I've heard other musicians talk about this too, but sometimes you gotta play a song enough times to where you like, the, the edge of the emotions wear off, because you'll be up there singing the song, and like, if it's a song you wrote and it's about something special to you, you know, like, you kind of like, you get, you get emotional singing it sometimes, and so that's kind of been the challenge with some of it, is like, trying to knock the edge off enough to where I can sing the song without it like, Oh, bringing yeah. a lot up, you know. I so don't, I don't uh, know if if this relates at all, but I know like in stand up, you know, because I do stand up, I'll have a new joke, and and there's like if it goes really well early on, there's an excitement yeah. I have towards the joke. But then once I get kind of used to doing it and, ex used, and expecting like how it's going to do, it'll start to get a little bit stale. But then over time, as I get even more familiar with the joke, it's easier for me to kind of like rekindle what I, yeah. I like about well, like, it, find funny in it. Is that the word you used last night when we were talking was muscle memory? And you're right. Like, yeah, it's like after a while, it's just like doing anything else with a little repetition. It's like you become so much more comfortable doing it to where like. Right. You're able to do it without thinking about every step of it, you know. And it's just that way with the songs too. Like, um, it becomes where it's a lot more automatic, you know. But and you don't want to lose all the emotion either. You, I no, mean, you yeah. You can't have that cathartic experience every night and you know, yeah. be almost in tears or something. But you don't want to lose that right. that connection. And, yeah. And the connection with the crowd, of course, has got to yeah. be. I've never played music live, but I know doing stand up. It's a joke you told a thousand times, it never really gets old because of how the crowd reacts to it. <laughs> yeah, because right? it's it's yeah. a it's a new joke every time the crowd hears exactly. it. Yeah. Yeah, well I mean I'd say comedy is probably just as just as much about crowd engagement. It's probably more about crowd engagement than yeah than singing, but you're right. Like it's and we've been really fortunate we've had the crowds we've had have been just phenomenal. I mean like the whole European run. We got over there and they told us like Everybody's just gonna stand and clap at the end of the song and don't take it personal because it's just the way it is in Europe. <laughs> and before we even walk out on stage, they're like ready to knock the walls out of the place. Yeah, it's like oh, it's it was great. electric. It was electric. Yeah, yeah, yeah you really turned electric. people on. Last night the crowd was great. I thought. I don't know how it was yeah. the night before, but uh. yeah, the enga the engagement and like I said, it, it really is. Um, it's become like a like a family. Like when we all when we're all in there together, it's like I don't feel like I'm playing for a bunch of strangers. It's like yeah. it yeah. feels like people I've known my whole life. Yeah, you know? it's something it's something yeah. special for sure. Yeah, yeah. It's happening in there. Yeah, when you said that uh, last night, uh, you know, there's there's a little. I mean, what we do is different, but there's a little bit. Of, uh, it occurred to me uh, that we most of the the people we meet that that watch our videos, there's a connection. It may not be that deep, but there's a little bit of a connection because. In a an appreciation and, and all that uh, as well. It, I don't know if it's as special or deep as, as yours, but but uh, the, the mere fact that people watch our long, boring videos, you know what I mean? I mean, yeah. and, wait, are and we in one up, of those right now? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, like they're watching now, maybe. And, and they, uh, it's like a badge of honor or courage or something. You know, someone comes up to us and, man, I love your videos or whatever, and say, wow. Yeah. I mean. If there's kind of an unspoken thing. Well, they must enjoy the approach we take. Let's face it, because sometimes it's not highly exciting or anything. They must be really a kindred spirit in terms of enjoying firearms. You well, know I, what I mean, I so think there's kind of a connection. I make. think it's just like when you go over to a relative's house and they're telling you some story about something. It's not like it's necessarily exciting or engaging, but you're connected and you're like, you're you're emotionally a a common attack, interest yeah. or something there, yeah. <clears throat> Yeah. I think people find peace. I mean, I know for me, it's like it's very relaxing to watch your stuff too. Like, it's you know, it's a you can take a nap, right? You don't, <laughs> yeah. you don't miss anything. Very yeah. relaxing. <laughs> Eight hours went by which like is, that. Which know? is pretty funny to think about. Something like something like shooting guns could be like such a relaxing video to watch. You know, like you think you think that's like action movies are full of people shooting guns, right. no, but then true. at the same time we're here watching like some like peaceful video. You know, it's like. I it's think part funny. of that is people, I see comments like that occasionally, people, uh, you know, if they're new to shooting especially, and you go to a shooting range and, wow, there's a 44 Magnum like we shot today or 45 or something, it's a big experience for someone if they're not a common shooter, you know, and yeah. bam, the recoil and the noise and, wow, let me get back on target, see if I can hit that darn thing, that can, yeah. and it's just a kind of a big deal, whereas if you shoot a lot like we do, then you take a few shots and build your conversation and it's not as, I don't know, it's just, it's, it's, yeah. maybe it is more relaxing. Did you, how early did you start shooting when you were growing up? I, mean, uh, I shot some as a teenager, but not a whole lot. I mean, okay. honest, honestly, a lot of it was probably 
was probably like early 20s. Like I said, I, okay. um, yeah, maybe maybe 18 or 19 on is when I first started like getting pretty regular about it. Okay. You know, like when I was growing up, we had guns in the house and um, it, it wasn't anything funny about guns. It just wasn't, it just took, I guess, a couple of my friends like right at, like I dropped out of high school and moved to North Carolina. And so some of the guys I met down there got me into it. Okay. Yeah. And um, like I said, I just, the, the, sh the shooting's fun, but really it was like, it was just something really exciting about like waking up on Saturday morning and going out to some range with a bunch of people and yeah. hanging out and getting to see what all they had and it's like I don't know it's like everybody's got their some people do like model trains and some people that's are like right. that's right. like are into Corvettes or whatever but that's it's right. just it's, it's something like, it's just something cool but it's just very exciting to get into you had the bug yeah, yeah. like the showing off your toys yeah kind of thing, you yeah know? it's like as much as I love shooting I get just as much fun out of like getting other people to shoot my guns you know they're just yeah. It's like, check this thing out, you know? Yeah. yeah. I don't know. Something exciting. And like I said, you always get, you know, you get those sort of like theatrical, like kind of crazy fringe type people sometimes, <laughs> yeah. you know? Yeah. Like, uh, but I'll say even like with your content, I think what so many people love about you is that you don't make it theatrical and you don't make it like into some spectacle. You're just like, a, you're just a guy out here shooting guns and like what can be more relatable to most of the population in the United States than just some you know, normal guy shooting guns, like, and just being honest about things. Everything on the internet now is so like, everything you click on has got some crazy thumbnail and a bunch of like, oh, this thing blew, you know, it's always some yeah, drama yeah. added in. So it's yeah, just kind of. I've always said our claim to fame is uh, we excel at mediocrity. You know? <laughs> <laughs> just normal fish. <laughs> I, and you know, I've, I've said too, we, no, we're not we're that great, but I, I know so many people I used to shoot with and uh, competitions and, and, and they're not world champions, but just people that, that shoot pretty well and, and are really into guns and and uh, good friends of mine and different people. And I have told them over the years many times, back when we were starting this thing, you know, and it was starting to grow a little bit, said, you could be doing the same thing. There's so many people I could name right now, 10 people, they could do as well or better. They just weren't goofy yeah. enough to get a camera out, you know? Yeah. And now everyone is. I, I'm surprised, like how slow all that happened. When we first got started on YouTube, there was a pretty big period of time, really years, yeah. where YouTube was just still in its infancy. Like it didn't catch on that quickly. Mm -hmm. I remember for years I'd have to explain to people like what I do for a living. It was so yeah. difficult to explain. People to them. didn't understand. Right, and then it was like almost overnight that when I tell people what I do for a living, now it's the other way, like they don't believe me. Yeah. You know, yeah. <laughs> because it's so big and everyone's trying to do it. I'm not sure know? what I do for a living. They still don't believe me. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Like, do you think some of that's from like, because I know monetization and like a lot of other things have changed over the years. Do you think that mm -hmm. affected it? Where it, like from, from the early days of YouTube? Yeah, pro yeah. probably did, because we didn't even know you could make money doing it for one thing. Y'all yeah. were just doing it for fun. At the yeah, yeah, just did it for fun. And I mean, you still are, but and we yeah, still are. Course, but yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was almost a year into it before we got the email from uh, YouTube wanting to know if we wanted to be YouTube partners, you know, and sharing revenue, and it put little banner ads on or something. We didn't know anything about it. We, yeah. well, I guess, I don't know, you know, yeah. it's kind yeah. of our reaction. So, so yeah, I was mentioning that many times. We how we came to it from a totally different uh, perspective because we just yeah. didn't know. And, and now if it were 2024 and we hadn't done this before, we might be coming to it from the same perspective. Hey, we could make a little extra money. You know, yeah. a lot of people are doing gun videos, so I'm not, yeah. you know, saying anything negative about yeah, they just, was, we're so old, but doing it so long. Yeah. I it think it's very gradual. Yeah, well, I think, I don't know, I think if y'all had done videos about anything, people would watch. I think a lot of it's the, you know, it's y'all's personality and the well, way you, you present yourself. Well, good. We're going to start doing cat videos. I got a couple could do, of cats, I think. Y'all could do, yeah, cat videos or <laughs> whatever, rollerblading. I don't know. I'd, I'd watch it. <laughs> I'd watch a Hickok 45 rollerblade. Yeah, really. Me on rollerblades <laughs> on the <laughs> gravel. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, our yeah our ascent uh, was so gradual. I'm curious about yours happening so quickly. Oh, man. Uh, the the world. Yeah. yeah, I'm curious like like what yeah like, take me through the like the the what are the stages of that like when it first happened, and then like where you're at now is it kind of like well so um so I like I said I've been writing for a while. So what I do anytime I wasn't at work, I I'd, I'd sit out in the woods and a lot of times I have my guitar with me and I come up with something in my head and I'd figure it out and write it and then pretty much as soon as I wrote the song I'd record it with my phone and now you can just upload it's there's a few of them but the one I use is called DistroKid and I still use them even now and you just upload it just like you're uploading a YouTube video and it puts it on Spotify and Pandora and everything for you and so <clears throat> early on I had like 10 monthly listeners and it was a hundred and then it was like a thousand and I think I was probably up to about 
but somewhere between 1,500 and 2,000 monthly listeners. And then um, I started posting on TikTok a lot. And man, I was into it. I even had like, I made business cards that had like my oh, wow. song names <laughs> and a little QR code that like went to my TikTok and my wow. Spotify. And I'd like, anytime I saw somebody that I thought might like my use, I'd be like, man, would you just, you know, will you check my thing out? And I heard that's how Johnny Cash made it. You're high tech, <laughs> Yeah, with yeah. the QR yeah, codes, yeah. yeah. You're high tech. Uh, so that's, so I, I, I went doing that for maybe like a year and a half or something. And then, um, and then in July I had this, um, I posted dog on it on TikTok, and it went like semi viral. And, uh, so the A and R guys were starting to call like Warner records and, um, Republic and stuff like some of their like salespeople or whatever we're calling. And I was like, man, I got to get my act together. I've never even played a show before. And yeah. so, um, I started going to open mic nights. And the first or the second one I went to is where I met my guitarist at. He was there. Is that a seafood restaurant of all places? Oh, wow. <laughs> and um, so, yeah, it was like I, I knew something was going to happen with music. I didn't know quite what. And I had half a Richmond written, and I put that on TikTok, and it, it was my most popular video out of any of them. And somehow uh, Draven from Radio WV caught it. And the two of us talked on like a Thursday and... Um, that Saturday he came down, I finished writing the song on Friday. So it was like, we talked Thursday, I finished writing the song Friday, we recorded it Saturday, and I think like the next week he uploaded it. And um, wow. so I still was, I was still working my regular job for like the first three or four days after it uploaded. And like, it was at like a million views, and then it was at like five million, and people, <laughs> yeah. co people that were starting to come into the store I worked in, uh, I was working for this uh, gas company, and people were coming in and they were like, they were starting to like real as yeah. <clears throat> it was almost surreal and um, yeah. all these people started calling from all these places and they were like and honestly I, it felt it was overwhelming and it felt like uh it felt like i couldn't trust anybody it's like i, I kind of got a little paranoid like with mm -hmm. all these music people were calling because i felt like they knew i didn't know they knew i didn't know much about the business and they knew there was some potential to make money off of me and it was just like so I just took a big step back and I made sure I took everything as slow as I could. Um, yeah, it seems yeah. smart. smart. Very yeah, smart. I just was like, let me just put a little, I, and the thing was everybody was just like, well, this is your moment. You're, this is your one hit and you got to, and if we, if you don't work with us, like everybody's going to forget about you in three months. And I was just like, and honestly it was like, it was my friends and family that helped really keep me grounded. Like early on I had, mm -hmm. um, had friends helping me do almost everything. Like helping me book the shows and helping me like figure out how to get stuff done. Like, like every, you know, taxes mm -hmm. and everything is like so much stuff. And so for the yeah. first six months, it was pretty much, it was pretty much friends and family helping me with everything. Cause I just, you know, I needed to like, I had to learn how the business worked. And yeah. You had a lot to do. So now, when, when, when was it that, uh, it was, you uploaded that, was that, did you say July? We was recorded it? it at the very end of July. I think like the last week of July and we okay. uploaded it at the beginning of August, like okay. the third or something. I didn't something. remember exactly when it was. But <clears throat> yeah, it was like August the third or something, I think it went up. When did it, like after all the, the hysteria, like when did it finally start to get a little bit comfortable? Like you're sort of settling into, okay. I can like a week this. ago. <laughs> <I'm> like, <laughs> <Okay>. <clears throat> no, to be truthful, it's like, I still don't think I've settled in, cause like I've had to figure out who to hire, you know, like you gotta have, mm -hmm. you gotta have people to help you with like, like obviously the business management side with like taxes and like, you know you're selling tickets at shows like you can't do all that yourself and then trying to book the shows and um yeah. you know you got to get somebody that like when we went to europe i wouldn't have even figured out how to get on the plane to get to europe much less haul all of all our right. instruments yeah. around so it's like just trying to find the right people to help and um yeah. trying to figure out how to do things without signing contracts and without having people own because the last thing i want to do is have somebody tell me what i can say or do yeah. and the mm -hmm. and really even more importantly than that i don't want people to feel like i'm ever that I'm ever forgetting about them because it's really people that allow this to happen, you know, right. like it was really just, it was people's support. And so if I can't support the the people who support me, then it's like, what the hell am I even doing this for right. anyway? You know, I um, think that's why the shows feel the way that they do. It, there's like <clears throat> you said on stage, it's like a, it's like a family. It, it, mm -hmm. it really does feel like that. it's like that video. It resonated with so many people for a very obvious reason. 
and those are the people that are coming to the shows. You can feel it. You're playing the music, and you can just and you're it's relaxed, incredible. and it's uh, you know it's it, it's not necessarily informal, but you know what I mean. It's kind of like this, you know. Yeah, you, yeah. You know, there's nothing scripted, or it's not a scripted yeah, feel to right. it, and that kind of. Yeah, thing. and we've we even rehearse very little because I almost like the magic of it being a little bit of chaos. Like it's kind of <laughs> there's something exciting <laughs> about cool. us getting remember up there. That line. <laughs> if our video seems disjointed, we, we yeah, like yeah. a little chaos. But yeah, it's just that sort of chaos of like yeah. being up on stage and trying to figure it out because that's kind of if you know. And being honest with the crowd, they they, yeah. they, can, they know that and they don't yeah. care. Yeah, you know? it's like you ever ever heard Jack Jack White talk about how uh, I mean it's, it seems so dirty, but it makes sense. How like on his live shows, if he has to, I forget what example he used, but if he has to like switch from like guitar to piano or something, he will intentionally like make it like kind of difficult like it's too a little too far away or or there's yeah. like some kind of thing just so that it's a struggle <laughs> and he it, like he believes that that like helps the overall thing so <laughs> yeah it probably does yeah i believe because yeah because it's yeah because you forget like you know we put people on pedestals that we that we see online and all and we act like yeah. they're somebody special but yeah everybody's just human beings and like it's just, just it is hammered it's, along <laughs> best we can yeah. Yeah. i think authenticity is coming back yeah. right like so like our kind of scope on on youtube we, you know, YouTube initially became popular, I think, because it was so authentic. Right. Right. But then once uh, there was sort of a gold rush effect, people figured out you could make money on it. It started to look even more produced and overproduced. Yeah. I kind of have a theory that now that you know with everything AI and just whatever VR, all these just like crazy technologies coming out and everything, mm -hmm. that I think authenticity is going to be coming back around. And yeah. I think that's a big reason too that people resonate with what you're doing. Yeah. Well, people are like, people are intuitive and like. I don't, you know, I'm no Dr. Phil, but there's a certain element of like our subconscious that can really ultimately tell when things are real or fake, you know, or fake. Mm -hmm. Like, um, yeah. and so it's easy to get caught up in like, like all the clickbait thumbnails and crazy titles and like, you know, you want to click it because your curiosity gets the best of you, but that stuff is just so shallow. And so it's like, <clears throat> you know, after a while it is nice to just, even if it is just some boring video, like you said, Sometimes it's nice to just watch like a real boring video. Like it's just something like rewarding yeah. about it. You that. know it's real. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I know one thing I want to add before I forget. Uh, it's so cool that it part of, as part of this, you've uh, been interviewed by Jordan Peterson. Yeah. And who else? Joe Rogan. Right? <clears throat> yeah. Jordan so Peterson. we got we got flooded with pod re podcast requests mm -hmm. last year, and so I am going to do a few more this year. Uh, Man, as much as you appreciate your peace and quiet out here, I can't believe there's such loud people driving by. <laughs> yeah. you know? We've been there to complain about the noise. Yeah, yeah you got yeah, to put a noise idea. complaining. <laughs> I, uh, Keep it down, I'm trying to shoot over here. Yeah. yeah, so I wanted to do Joe Rogan first because I just felt like he's got such a platform and he's uh, yeah. he listens to people and like wants to have actual conversations and there is no like gimmick or, you know, yeah. there's no ulterior motive to it. So we did we did Rogan first and then Jordan Peterson, I've been watching for years, and he's, uh, despite what anybody thinks of the man, he genuinely cares about trying to help people improve their lives, and he has a vast understanding of human behavior and psychology, well, and yeah. so, uh, yeah, so it was important to talk to him, because I've read his books, and I've tried to, mm -hmm. you know, understand a lot more about myself through some of his lectures, and his, the best stuff Jordan Peterson has, in my opinion, isn't any of the new stuff, it's the old lectures from when he was, back when he didn't know he was Jordan Peterson. Yeah. He was just <laughs> I've heard some of those. Yeah. Yeah, they're excellent. So good. Excellent lectures. He's so, so smart. Wow. What a genius. <clears throat> yeah, and I, I I really wanted to do that podcast in person, but he was in Italy at the mm -hmm. time and I didn't have a passport yet, and so we yeah. had to do it virtual. But uh yeah, I want to do some more, you know, um I definitely want to do some more like I've actually we're in the process now of talking about how I would set my own podcast up. Because there's a what I'd love to do this year is give a voice to the voiceless and um, we've got some cool interviews we did in Europe with people who are going through things and we're going to kind of like expose some stuff that that they're dealing with over there which I'm excited to, to do but yeah I think what That'd better be cool. thing to do if I've got a platform to yeah to make a difference absolutely yeah yeah take advantage of it yeah and do it because yeah. uh people need it I mean uh, yeah. you know that's again that's why the, people like the song it's, it's a great song but also there's some things you talked about in there that people are very concerned about and yeah it's a scary it's a, a truly scary time i mean yeah i feel like it always feels a little you know there's always something going on in the world you know, of course yeah but, but it's just it's just happening pretty it. fast right now i, feel I like. think that's what it is yeah i think there's always there's always been war and there's always been like 
there's always been something happening, some kind of, you know, if you look mm -hmm. in like the 1920s in America, they had plenty of things oh, to worry yeah, about, right. you know, and on from the 20s Third on. Reason, yeah. But I think now it's like, yeah, we're so, we're so connected. The thing that scares me more than anything about today's time is like, we're so distracted, I guess is what it is. Like most people spend 90% of their time like, they're, you know, and of course, I mean, we're sitting here on it. So anybody watching this video now is looking at their phone. Uh, watching but, videos. Yeah, what are y'all doing? <laughs> <laughs> but in all seriousness, though, it's like, yeah, it's just, I think, I mean, it's to the point when you drive, it's hard for people to drive down the road without looking at their phone now. Yeah. It's like, yeah. and it's only going to get worse because the stuff's getting more and more appealing. I mean, it's like, you know, it's, uh, that stuff's made for the mind to want to look at. Right. And uh, you saw, I saw this video the other day. Now they've got this like, I don't know what it is. Apple's come out with like this thing you yeah. wear, oh, mm -hmm. yeah. and there yeah. was, and of course it was a bit. It was supposed to be be funny, but it wouldn't surprise me if this is going to be life in ten years. There's a guy driving his Tesla, so the Tesla's driving him down the road, and he's wearing that like watching something. Yeah. All he's going, I'm just like, <laughs> yeah. what world am I in? Oh, you know, know. yeah, so, virtual. It's just I a know. virtual world. I, I thought I've had this thought before. Like, how good? does virtual reality or video games have to get where we start to actually value our lives? <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Where it's like, oh, I'm living in Grand Theft Auto 7 right now. This is so much yeah. better than the game. You know? Yeah, of course. Yeah. Oh, wow. But yeah, no, it's it's been a real pleasure to be here and do this. This is like, yeah, thank yeah. you so much. Like if all my all my hopes and dreams, I've just checked another one off the list, you know? Like what cooler thing to do than to come and shoot at your range? Well, so. like I said, it was great to, to meet you. And uh, yeah, we, we, you know, we, I've been shooting here, we've been shooting here since 86, 87. Well, John wasn't shooting in 86 or 87, I don't think. He yeah. wasn't born then. That's about, but, <laughs> yeah, know, I don't think I started shooting until the 90s. So, so. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so we don't think as much about it. You know, we, we're just like you, we just appreciate that people, yeah. you know, watch our videos and we're able to shoot for a living and, you know, have fun doing this and meet people like you. Yeah. Meet other weirdos. It's just, just a lot <laughs> yeah. of fun, you know. Especially yeah. other tall weirdos. Right, yeah. 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 A lot of people don't realize this dude is what, six five, right? Well on Wikipedia I'm five eleven. Five eleven. So. Well, Wikipedia's always right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's nothing anything you read on the internet about me is a hundred percent true. So yeah. I'm definitely five eleven. Always yeah. trust the internet. Yeah. But, yeah. but we yeah. want to keep y'all all night. So glad to else? see yeah. you being successful with what you're doing and, I, and, I, and I, I really mean it that show was incredible it was it was like yeah well those shows were it's like i needed that you know well, what thanks. I mean? it means a lot yeah. i needed that i was like i needed that i needed to see it's that great. show it was incredible and it's it's yeah it's a lot of it i have to give a lot of the credit to i have a really good group with me on stage and the i've got great. some really good people behind the scenes a real good sound guy back yeah. there like making sure everything sounds good and yeah. you know well um, your guitar picker can pick too uh, <laughs> I have to say. yeah yeah he's great joey yeah. right Joey, uh, Joey, yeah, he's, he's yeah, incredible. Well, yeah, thank you. We don't want to lag on. Thanks yeah. for coming by, yeah. man. And it's good such to, an good honor. To meet yeah, you. thank we'll you so to much. Get Maybe we'll come to Virginia, raid yeah. your house sometime. That's right. Yeah, well, I'm a. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna have to try to. <laughs> I'm gonna have to build me a mini Hickok range yeah, on my place. Right, yeah, yeah. We'll come and so. blast your steel. <laughs> so. Well, it's been great to have you. On yeah, the it's range. been an absolute blast. I'm and, glad we uh, got to sit down and talk. Yeah, so. man. It's let's been good to have you all come in. And, yeah. Let, let's yeah. say goodbye like five more times. Let's do. <laughs> <laughs> well, what were we saying about authentic? That's yeah, how, yeah, that's exactly. how you authentic. That's how it is when you goodbye yeah, in yeah. the South. <laughs> yeah, when you're over at your grandpa's house and you're getting ready to leave. And well, he's I like, guess we oh, better get going. <laughs> there's the, yeah, there's the in the house goodbye. There's the front porch goodbye. There's the in the car goodbye. Yeah. Right. When you're about yep. to leave. That's yeah. Right. And then you got to get back out of the car because he remembered you got to help him like reset his watch or whatever. Yeah, exactly. I know. So the way people act, you know, when there's not a script, you know, it's just, I guess you could say it's just, just a damn shame. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> like that. Well, we did have a script right there. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. what I've been reading off. They don't see the script <laughs> yeah. on, the, on that tripod, right? Now, we appreciate y'all coming in, and uh, and I know you love this guy, and, uh, you know, just Yeah, he's a great, he is a great guy. Yeah. yeah. I don't know about I'm glad John. you guys got to see me in this video. <laughs> yeah. so. We'll see y'all right. later, man. Say, say right. sign off, man. All right. Toodaloo. Bye. <laughs> Life is good. All right. Okay. Was that informal on that? I thought that was great. <laughs> yeah. That couldn't have been any better. No one will ever accuse us of being too careful <laughs> about what we say. Or... Hey, before I shoot some more, help me thank some people I know you'll want to support. Silence for Central. They make excellent suppressors, and they really specialize in making the buying process simple. Bud's Gun Shop. Great source for firearms, ammunition, accessories, even our merch, yeah. The Sonoran Desert Institute, 
distance learning school. You can get certified in gunsmithing or a degree in firearms technology. Alabama Holster, they make great little Kydex concealment holsters, high quality. Check them out. Wideners.com, great source for ammunition online. Yes, competitive prices and fast service. Check our description for more information on them. Talon Gun Grips, been using them forever. They really make a firearm feel good. You can shoot it, yes. Ballastol, great lubricant, uh, cleaner, been using it since 1999. I love it. Can I shoot some more?